Hi there, readers. I am so excited to refresh our thinking about why it's so inspiring to do some writing about our reading. Today, I want to tell you that as you write while you're reading, you are going to become even more alert to the details in the text that you read. So I invite you to take out your reader's notebook. Please write down this teaching point at the tip top. Mine looks like this. Readers are extra alert when they write about their reading. So I have written that little uh, teaching point at the top. Again, readers who write about their text are extra alert, seeing even more in their books. What does it mean to be extra alert as a reader? You're already like awake and, and you're reading, so how can you be even more alert? What we mean by that is that that alertness will come out because you'll be seeking out some of the small details that show up in the text. So as you write, as you read, you're gonna find little beautiful, important details hidden in the text that you might pass over if you weren't reading carefully. So I wanna to read to you a chapter you could be reading, your teacher might be reading a different story to you, but today I just wanna read this chapter to you from Home of the Brave. God with a wet nose. We park by the side of the fast car road. Walking through the snow is hard work, like wading across a river wild with rain. The cow is near a fine, wide-armed, good for climbing tree. To say the truth of it, she is not the most beautiful of cows. Her belly sags and her coat is scarred, and her face tells me she remembers sweeter days. Remember, readers, we're reading with an extra alertness, looking for the little details. What details might we write down? This seems important to me. This piece here about the cow, you know, it just says, to say the truth of it, that kind of phrase wakes me up to go, ooh, a truth is coming out here. She's not the most beautiful of cows. Her belly sags and her coat is scarred. And her face tells me she remembers sweeter days. So I'm just gonna add a little post-it here. Okay. My father would not have stood for such a weary old woman, and yet to see her here in this strange land makes my eyes glad. In my old home, back in Africa, cattle mean life. Huh, cattle mean life. That seems extra important. That's a big deal. I'm gonna write on my little post-it here, the value of cattle. Back at home, and maybe that's teaching me a little bit about the African culture. This seems relevant for Keck because the title of the of the chapter is God with a wet nose. Is that another way of saying the cow? Here he just comes right out and says, Cattle mean life. They are our reason to rise with the sun, to move with the rains, to rest with the stars. They are the way we know our place in the world. The cow looks past me. I can see that she's pouting with only snow and dead grass to keep her company. I shake my head. A cow can be trouble with her slow, stubborn body, her belly ripe with milk, her pleading eyes that shine at you like river rocks in the sun. An old woman comes out of the barn. She's carrying a bucket. Two chickens trot behind her, scolding and fussing the woman waves. Just saying hello to the cow, Dave calls. Let me know if she answers, the woman calls back, and she returns to the barn. We should go, Dave says. Your aunt is expecting us. A little longer, I say. Please. I know cattle are important to your people, Dave says. Again, he tries to use my words. A man I helped to settle here taught me a saying from Africa. I'll bet you would like it. A cow is God with a wet nose. Reference to the title. I laugh. We wait. The wind sneaks through my coat. My teeth shiver. I take off the glove and hold out my hand, and at last, the cow comes to me. She moves, a harsh and mournful sound. It isn't the fault of the cow. She doesn't know another way to talk. She can't learn the way I'm learning, word by slow, slow word. 
I stroke her cold, wet coat, and for a moment I hold all that I've lost and all I want right there in my hand. Now readers, gosh, we're really thinking about how to be extra alert as a reader and how writing about the text might help us get even more of the details. So today I want to write about the value of the cow. This, this really strikes me. Um, so I might sketch out a picture of a cow in my notebook and I might write some of these, I might write some of these um, quotes down. Okay? So my sketch of a cow is not going to be wonderful, but I just want to have a little is there a cow on the front cover here? Yes, maybe I'll replicate the picture here in my notebook. And I want to use this to capture some of the things that I'm going to be learning about Keck and his beliefs and his values and his culture. So right now, I want to write some of those things down while they're fresh. So even in my notebook, I'm going to write values, beliefs, culture, and specifically, I want to write this quote. Now, as you're reading alertly today, I want you to see if you can capture one or two quotes in your text that help you to see more as a reader. So this one I want to write down. In my old home back in Africa, cattle mean life. So I'm going to put my quotation marks in my old own, I'm just looking back at my text. Back in Africa, cattle mean life. Now, I've got my quote down. I want to make sure I write page 14. Okay, so readers, I hope that you're starting to see how your notebook can be a space to capture important things that you need to think about and write about. Here's my little sketch of the cow. Here's a couple of things I'm going to be wondering about. Values, beliefs, culture. And I have a quote that I've taken directly from the text with the page number. Now I'm going to do some writing about that. Okay, I'm going to actually stop, think, linger about what I used to think about cows and how possibly Keck is changing my thinking about. So I'm just gonna say, now I'm wondering, I, and I might write more about that, I had never considered, you know, the value of cows. So as you can see readers, I went back and I just read carefully a little section of the text and that has helped me to draw out some of those details. I wanna refresh your memory. Um, last time we met, I shared with you this notebook samples. Your notebook is going to be the space where possibly you do a quick sketch, you write down some key words, you grab a quote from the text and you write long about it. Your notebook might be a space for you to collect some characters that you're meeting. It might be a space where you capture the um, story as it's happening first, then, then you know, kind of like a plot line. You might be looking at how different characters are connected in the text. It might be an artistic space for you. You might, this is what I do quite a bit, is write something down on a post-it and then keep it in here so it doesn't get lost. Okay, there might be one or two post-its that mean more to you. I want you to study this example with me. Look at this beautiful collection of ideas where this character is doing some synthesizing work and connecting in a, in a text. And then look at down below Persepolis where the character is really tracking um, the emotional, this is called an emotional timeline. So how do characters' emotions change over time? So with that, I wanna remind you today as you set off to read, we don't want to just think about characters. Characters are one thing we want to consider as we're reading a text. We want to think about the plot. We want to think about the setting. You might 
do some setting sketches to help you understand the significance of place and mood and changes. You might also consider an object that repeats. I have a, an idea that possibly this cow that Keck meets in this chapter might be a character in the text. So I want you to be keeping track of all of these different um, things that you come across as a reader. Okay, so today, I want you to go off and I want you to do some writing about um, your text, collect some creative thoughts any way that you want in your reader's notebook and use that as a strategy to become even more alert as a reader, seeking out those hidden little details to help you understand and interpret your text even more. Happy reading.